And now I have a weapon that only I can defeat. And when I unleash it, I'll get- <laughs> You sly dog! You got me monologuing! I can't believe it! Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 times movie villains lost because of their big mouth. Do you know what your sin is? And here's my little secret. It's my word against yours. For this list, we'll be looking at the times antagonists could have claimed victory if they'd focused less on talk and more on action. Since we'll be looking at how villains lost, beware of spoilers ahead. <laughs> Who's your favorite chatty movie villain? Let us know in the comments. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to check out the full song at the link below. Number 10. Nathan Jessup just testifies too much. A few good men. I want you to acknowledge that the judge advocate has made you aware of the possible consequences involved in accusing a Marine officer of a felony without proper evidence. I've been so advised. Lieutenant Caffey spends the film trying to get to the bottom of why a Marine named William Santiago lost his life while serving at Guantanamo Bay. His investigation eventually leads him to question the base commander Colonel Jessup in a courtroom. But after Caffey gets a little carried away, the judge says that Jessup doesn't have to answer any more questions. However, the colonel keeps talking. You don't have to answer that question. I'll answer the question. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers! I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! After giving an intimidating monologue, Caffey gets Jessup to reveal the truth. The colonel's orders led to Santiago's demise. Did you order the code red? I did the job! Did you, you order the code red? You're goddamn right I did! The incredible acting and dialogue in this scene nearly make us forget that Jessup might have gotten away with a crime if he just pleaded the fifth in court. What the hell is this? Colonel Jessup? You have the right to remain silent. Any statement I'm being charged with a crime. A trial by court is that what this is? Number nine, Count Tyrone Rugen ruins his victory, The Princess Bride. I will go up to the six-fingered man and say, hello, my name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father, prepare to die. When Inigo Montoya arrives at the castle, he doesn't plan to show the cruel Count Rugen any mercy. The villain took the life of Inigo's father. Once Count Rugen faces the man he orphaned, he quickly runs. This cowardly move allows him to strategically hide and severely wound Inigo. But instead of finishing the swordsman off, Rugen decides it would be a good time to gloat. You must be that little Spanish brat I taught a lesson to all those years ago. Simply incredible. If you've been tracing me your whole life. His sadistic speech goes on so long that Inigo has enough time to recover and deal the fatal blow. If Rugen had cut the conversation short and wounded his foe again, he might have triumphed. Unfortunately for him, he couldn't talk Inigo out of getting revenge. Now that it's over, I don't know what to do with the rest of my life. Number eight, the operative's oratory sin, Serenity. Do you know what your sin is, Doctor? I wonder if you It's like pride. The operative is an extremely efficient and well-spoken assassin. While he's good with a sword, his most useful technique allows him to paralyze someone by hitting their back in a specific spot. But he may have been too reliant on that move. When the operative tries to stop Captain Mal Reynolds from releasing information to the public, the two come to blows. The fight is even for a while. As soon as the operative gets an opening, he uses the paralyzing technique on Mal. I'm sorry. <coughs> <coughs> You should know there's no shame in this. Thinking he's already won, he monologues so much that he fails to notice his opponent can still move. This chatty error gives Mal the chance to turn the fight around and give the operative a taste of his own medicine. I'm sorry about the throat. I want to say your famous last words right now. Number seven, Clove can't stop chatting. The Hunger Games. Come on, Kato! Go! I'm coming for you. There's absolutely no time for small talk when you're thrown into a violent battle royale that can only have one winner. Unless you're Clove, apparently. During the Hunger Games, she manages to ambush fan favorite contestant Katniss. After a short struggle, Clove is able to hold Katniss at knife point. Although Clove could have put the girl on fire out instantly, she decides to brag about the time she helped end the life of a little girl named Rue. Oh, it's too bad that you couldn't help your little friend. That 
little girl. What was her name again? <laughs> Rue? <laughs> Unbeknownst to anyone, Rue's ally Thresh was nearby, and a little unhappy to hear this story. He quickly and single-handedly dispatches Clove for her crimes. She ultimately had herself to blame for losing this violent game. Just this time, Twelve. For Rue. Number 6. Mayor Bellwether blabs about her plan, Zootopia. We're on the same team, Judy. Underestimated, underappreciated. Aren't you sick of it? A sheep named Don Bellwether had one of the most airtight evil plans in Disney history. After using a special serum to turn certain predator animals in Zootopia into savage beasts, she framed the lion mayor and assumed his position. Once in power, Bellwether would be free to continue the conspiracy for her benefit. But what ruined this sinister plot? Bellwether's big mouth. Near the end of the film, she corners a rabbit officer named Judy Hopps and her fox friend Nick. After Bellwether becomes convinced Nick went savage, she details her evil plan. So that's it. Prey fears Predator and you stay in power? Yeah, pretty much. It won't work. Fear always works. Unfortunately for the sheep, Judy records every step of the heinous plot. It's my word against yours. Ooh, actually. <laughs> and I'll dart every Predator in Zootopia to keep it that way. It's your word against yours. Bellwether can only ba helplessly as her evil plan is unraveled by her own words. Number five, Alira's arrogant speeches. Van Helsing. Do you like to fly? <laughs> While Alira's vampiric abilities gave her plenty of advantages in battle, she had one fatal flaw. She liked playing with her food too much. Alira missed several opportunities to feast on her opponents because she wanted to tease them a little bit more. This comes back to bite her when she fights Anna one on one. When Alira has her prey seemingly cornered with nowhere to go, she decides to taunt her opponent one last time. Anna, my love, this is your blood that shall keep me beautiful. What do you think of that? This gave Anna just enough time to grab a steak from her ally Carl and end the vampire once and for all. We would make fun of Alira more, but Anna honestly said it best. I think if you're going to kill someone, kill them. Don't stand there talking about it. Number four, Ronan runs his mouth. Guardians of the Galaxy. I promised Thanos I would retrieve the orb for him. Only then will he destroy Xandar for me. Nebula, go to Xandar and get me the orb. We knew two things about Ronan the Accuser right away. He loves dramatic speeches, and he really, really, really wants to destroy the planet Xandar. After Ronan acquires the Power Stone, he gains the ability to accomplish his destructive dream. All he has to do is touch his hammer to the planet to win. But before Ronan can accomplish this incredibly simple and easy task, he feels the need to give a speech. Behold, your guardians of the galaxy, what fruit have they wrought? His long monologue gave Star-Lord enough time to come up with a distraction that Drax and Rocket used to blow up the hammer. At least Ronan did one thing right that day. He made the Guardians of the Galaxy nickname sound cool. We're the Guardians of the Galaxy. Number three, Scar's silver tongue backfires. The Lion King. Long live the king. Few villains have accomplished as much as Scar has. He orchestrated his brother King Mufasa's demise, forced Prince Simba into hiding, and became king of the Pride Lands. The one thing he couldn't do was keep his mouth shut. When Simba returns to the Pride Lands to reclaim the throne, Scar turns the pride against the prince. But before landing a fatal blow, the villain decides to confess the truth about how his brother met his end. And here's my little secret. The confession energizes Simba enough to fight back and get the entire pride on his side again. And when Scar tries to deflect all the blame to the hyenas, It's the hyenas who are the real enemy. It was their fault, it was their idea. The vicious animals make him pay. Guess that's what the Lion King deserves. So sorry for that pun. Number two, Ego exposes his evil deeds. Guardians of the Galaxy, volume two. I continued building from there. Layer by layer, the very planet you walk on now. Whoa. 
but I wanted more. Although Ego could shape an entire planet to his will, he wanted to expand his control throughout the universe. He could only achieve this goal by teaming up with somebody who could handle a celestial amount of power. Once Ego discovers his long-lost son Peter Quill was up for it, the two connected. They were all set to kick off the expansion until Ego dropped a huge bomb. He gave Peter's mother the tumor that claimed her life. It broke my heart to put that tumor in her head. What? An enraged Peter immediately attacked his dad and teamed up with his friends to take the planet down. We don't know how many centuries Ego was planning his expansion, but we know for certain that his schemes ended with a very short conversation. Listen to me! You are a god. If you kill me, you'll be just like everybody else. What's so wrong with that? No! Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Buddy Pine, also known as Syndrome, The Incredibles. He was beaten while he was monologuing. This isn't the end of it! I will get your son eventually! I'll get your son! <laughs> oh no. Alec Trevelyan, Goldeneye. He could have taken down 007 without a word. You know, James, I was always better. Valentine, Kingsman the Secret Service. He thought the Kingsman wouldn't hear his master plan. Now I'm gonna tell you my whole plan and then I'm gonna come up with some absurd and convoluted way to kill you, and you'll find an equally convoluted way to escape. Top Dollar, The Crow. His long speech gave The Crow a huge opening. You got a lot of spirits, son. I am gonna miss you. I have something to give you. I don't want it anymore. Hugo Drax, Moonraker. He talked himself right into 007's trap. Expel them. Jaws, you obey me! Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Elam expires because of exposition. The good, the bad, and the ugly. I had lots of time to learn how to shoot with my left. Our top villain could give a detailed lecture on how not to confront your nemesis. If he had survived, of course. The antagonistic bounty hunter Elam walked away from a battle with a bandit named Tuco with one less arm, so the villain was ecstatic to catch Tuco unaware in the bathtub. But rather than taking his revenge right away, Elam decided to savor the moment by gloating and boasting. Now I find you in exactly the position that suits me. Tuco took the opportunity to reach for a hidden bathtub gun and take the bounty hunter out. Elam didn't even have enough time to regret his talkative choice. The last thing Tuco says to his enemy are words every villain should live by. When you have to shoot, shoot, don't talk. <laughs> Do you agree with our picks? Let us know in the comments. And hey, if you're a fan of the song playing right now, be sure to check out the music video for it right here.